Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for November 2nd, 2022. There is a few pre-orders to tell you guys about. I got a pretty solid analog productions restock, a couple of in-demand record store day titles that I got for the first time and or a restock of. And then I'll show you this week's uh, new arrivals as well. But the pre-orders, Metallica's next album, I think it's called 72 Seasons. I didn't write it down here, but uh, I'm pretty sure it is. 72 Seasons, right? The indie exclusive we got coming April 14th next year. The name kind of throws me off a little bit because we've got a restaurant here in Phoenix called 52 Seasons. So I want to keep calling it 52 Seasons, but I'm pretty sure it's 72 Seasons. The Police, Around the World, it's an LP DVD combo that comes out February 24th. Donald Bird, Live at the Half Note, Volume 1. This is a Blue Note Tone Poet, all analog, cut by Kevin Gray. That comes out January 6th, so that's pretty soon. And, uh, of course, we got uh, Scolo Ho Fo Ho. Is that right? Scolo Ho Fo O? Yeah, that's right. Scolo Ho Fo O. That's a Blue Note Tone Poet, coming out the same day, January 6th. So uh, I'm not familiar with Holo, Sco, Ho, Fo, Ho, Ho, Sco, Ho, no. Let me start over. Scolo, Ho, Fo. I'm not familiar with Scolo, Ho, Fo and their album, O, oh, but I'm interested. I want to hear what Scolo, Ho, Fo sounds like. I'm going to wait until it comes out. I've been pretty happy so far with the non-traditional releases that they've done on the Blue Note, uh, Tone Poet, and the Classic Series titles. There really hasn't been any duds. There were albums that once I listened to, I'm like, oh, I feel like I should have been a little bit more familiar with this album. But uh, yeah, that's it for pre-orders. The big title for the week is the new Steely Dan UHQR that came in. That has uh, shipped already if you purchased it for pre-order. If not, I have it available now. So uh, yeah, for $149.99, you can buy a thrill. I know. I wasn't going to do it. I'm sure the joke is played out, but... I it just, I told myself, don't do it. It's a lame joke. It's bad. I'm sitting here looking at it. I, I couldn't help myself. I got a problem. Okay. Steely Dan can't buy a thrill. Actually, I'm not a huge Steely Dan fan, but this in Asia are actually pretty good albums. Reeling in the Years is a really good tune. Dirty Work. Uh, you know, there's a couple of really solid tracks on the album. But like I said, I wouldn't consider myself a huge Steely Dan fan. Restock on SACDs. I'll get that out of the way because I always forget, and then I'll show you the rest of the analog production stuff at the end. But I've got a restock on SACD of The Doors, Morrison Hotel, The Doors Soft Parade, The Doors Self Titled, The Doors Strange Days. I should have just said we've got all the doors because, what is that? One, two, three, four, five. And yeah, and there's the sixth map. What do I not have? I don't have L.A. Woman. Okay, we got everything but L.A. Woman. And the door is waiting for the sun. What the hell happened there? It's actually got a broken case, and it was cellophane over that. All right, we won't ship you that one. And uh, the Cowboy Junkies Trinity Sessions. Okay. Two new tone poets that came out this week. The first one is Blue Mitchell's Bring It Home to Me. All analog, cut by Kevin Gray from the original analog master tape. The Blue Mitchell stuff on Blue Note is not actually that easy to get. Even though this is a 60s title, you know, a mid-60s title, you don't really see originals of this too often. Here's something you never see, clean anyways, and that is Pitcher of Health. Excuse me. I always want to call this album Pitchers, Pitchers of Health. I don't know why, but it's Pitcher's Pitcher of Heath. Chet Baker, Art Pepper, Curtis Counts, the non-blue suede shoes, Carl Perkins. This is an absolutely killer album. Impossible to find these early Pacific Jazz titles clean. I mean, I'm on the West Coast. They do come up, but they're always destroyed. Always destroyed. But yeah, now you can get a nice clean copy as a tone poet. I love the non-blue note tone poet stuff they do too. Typically, if they're not doing a blue note title, and they're doing a non-Blue Note label, they really are putting out, like, killer titles. You know what I mean? I think they're a little bit more apprehensive about doing a non-Blue Note title, so they really just do the creme de la creme of the non-Blue Note stuff. Also, I like the fact that it's not a gatefold. 
I like the gate folds. They look good on the shell. You know, they look good. You open them up. You open them up. You look at them once. Then they get filed away, and then they take up a lot of space. So I kind of dig the non gate fold versions of Tone Poets when they come out. Jerry Garcia. This is, I believe this was an indie store exclusive. Limited to 10,000 on gold vinyl. This is the first time ever the expanded 2LP edition has been out on a vinyl. And gold vinyl, for, for that matter. Okay. Did an unboxing of this. It was the only record store day title I reviewed. Absolutely killer. Todd Rundgren's something, anything. 4LP, most likely analog, cut by Chris Bellman from the original tapes. Sounds great. Either way, sounds absolutely fantastic, and it's reasonably priced for a 4LP audiophile record. This never came the first time around, but here it is. Jefferson Airplanes, live at Monterey Pop. This one particular box did a little trip around the country, courtesy of uh, UPS. This was in there, as well as the uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips. Two titles I just didn't get for Black Friday. But I have them now. The Monterey Pop title was actually asked about quite a bit. Backseat Lovers Waiting to Spill. On Indie Exclusive Clear Vinyl. Brittany Howard, live at Sound Emporium. This is a limited edition maroon vinyl. I'm so glad they're bringing back this series. Rolling Stones from the vault. This is San Jose, 1999. I love pretty much every one of these that they've released. They're essentially a series of live Rolling Stones concerts going all the way back to the 70s. Uh, let's see. This is from the No Security Tour, which was right after the Bridges to Babylon Tour. It was kind of a mini tour they did. First Rolling Stones show I ever seen. Actually, my first concert that I ever willingly paid money to go see. My own money. It was a huge deal. I saw them on this tour in Tampa. I want to say it was 99. I don't know if it was 2000. I want to say it was 99. Unbelievable show. I think I was 17, 18 years old at the time. It was great. They were supporting uh, pretty much Bridges to Babylon as well. And I thought it was a... I liked Bridges to Babylon. That was a really good album. Let's see, yeah, Saint of Me was from that album. Hmm. Out of Control was the, I think those were the two tracks they were really doing on all of the shows from the No Security Tour. But yeah, there you go. Whew. Also from the 90s, the Backstreet Boys, a very Backstreet Christmas. Let's see, Christmas in New York, last Christmas in Winter Wonderland, featuring 13 tracks. All right. Just continuing with the 90s theme, we've got some Backstreet Boys. This is actually a newly reactivated title. So when manufacturers delete a title, it typically goes away. Sometimes they'll bring it back as a new pressing, a new variation. This is a reactivation, which is like the little known thing that happens as well, which is where they just bring a title back completely. Same pressing, just they started making more. Robert Plant and Allison Krauss is uh, Raising Sand. Newly reactivated. So, a, you know, a continuation of the original pressing. Ornette Coleman from Music on Vinyl. Changes of the Century. They only did a thousand of these on gold vinyl. This is number 112. Pretty limited to do a thousand of them. Solomon Burke. What is this? Don't Give Up On Me, 2LP set on colored vinyl. Featuring songs by Bob Dylan, Tom Waits, Van Morrison, Brian Wilson, Elvis Costello, and Nick Lowe. Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band, Trouble Is 25. This is on cream vinyl limited to 1,000. This is a uh, 2LP set. We have a neck deep, wishful thinking, purple vinyl. Also, the 40th anniversary of Ultravox's Rage in Eden, 
This is a two LP set. First disc is the album Half Speed Mastered at Alchemy. Disc two is a bonus disc of single edits and B-sides. There also is a super-ish deluxe edition. It's really just a slightly bigger box. But this is a four LP set, which includes the first two LPs of that. And there's a bonus concert, Hammerschmidt 1981 on disc three and four. Two gatefold uh, set in a little slip box. Comes out pretty nice. Previously unreleased concert, pretty cool. Okay. This week, here it is, the newest variation of some King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard album. We got KGLW, Golden Rattlesnake Edition. I feel like I've already showed this in the past, but like all King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard albums, they just make endless amount of color variations. They keep selling. If they didn't keep selling, I wouldn't buy them. But yeah, this is the Golden Rattlesnake Edition. going on out there holy cow it's like 25 fire trucks flying by all right there they go okay not just one king gizzard and the wizard lizard album this week we've got two king gizzard and the wizard lizard albums this week we've got paper mache dream balloon this is the original album plus an instrumental bonus disc i feel like this is a new variation on paper mache dream balloon but I can't keep track. So I'm just guessing, to be honest with you. But like I said, it's, it's like their 47th LP this year. So I can cut myself some slack for not being able to remember them all. Okay, Queensryche. Frequency Unknown. The final Queensryche album with Jeff Tate on 2LP Silver Vinyl. From some pot. We've got Hot Hot Heat Make Up The Breakdown, Loser Edition, which is their first pressing. The very first pressing they do is always on colored vinyl, then they go to black vinyl afterwards. This is on yellow vinyl. Alison Pothier, Pontier. This is a double LP. We've got Faking My Own Death, and then we've got Shaking Hands with Elvis. And she's on the cover, dressed uh, in an Elvis jumpsuit. Belt and all. Never seen that move uh, on uh, any Elvis concert film, but, you know, maybe. We've got Yuna, self-titled. Yesi, Jessica Reyes. Jamiroquai, kind of like the Ultravox. This comes in two versions. This is the standard 2LP set, High Times. This is a singles collection, 92 to 2006. Then there is a deluxe edition, which is two discs as well, but it comes with a slip mat and liner notes. And they're numbered as well. This is also on green marble vinyl. Another Cat Stevens reissue, Catch Bull at four. I'm glad they went to the traditional shrink and lost that crappy plastic sleeve that they were putting them in that kind of like looked like it was just gonna disintegrate on you. Doro, Warrior Soul, double white vinyl. We've got, this is a Friday music release, Carly Simon's No Secrets. What is this? Earth Eater, Trinity. It's actually a pretty cool cover. A little uh, overexposed, but I'm guessing that's uh, by design, right? Oh boy, and we're going to finalize the new arrivals, continuing the 1990s theme with a Hanson Umbach, Finally It's Christmas, spectacular. Here we go. This is the lovable boy band from the 90s, Hanson, doing a Christmas album. I don't know why, but uh, yeah.
you know, I kind of had Mbop out of my head since probably high school until just now. Now it's all coming back. It's not good. Okay. Shelby Lynn, just a little oven. This is the Analog Productions restock, plus the CDs I already showed you. 33 RPM. Ah, Faust, ballet music. This is an RCA Living Stereo title. Originally, probably one of the most expensive of the RCA Living Stereos, minus the Royal Ballet. You know, this was going for about a grand, it might still. Love the cover on this, look at that devil there, just looking really diabolical. Great album. Killer sounding, it was on the Taz, analog, you know, the Absolute Sounds original Taz list. Jano Starker, Mercury Living Presence title. We've got Sarah McLaughlin's Afterglow. Also Sarah McLaughlin's Mirrorball. What else? Prestige series stuff. Probably the Best seer, well, I'm trying to think of my favorite analog production stuff over the years. This is possibly the best series I think they ever did. The Prestige series, they did 25, 25 stereos, 25 monos. They're absolutely fantastic. Most of them, I think all of them actually are cut by Kevin Gray. They sound absolutely killer. Uh, highly recommend it. They were out of print for years. When they went out of print, most of them were hovering around 200 bucks a piece. But uh, yeah, they started repressing them. A Stereo Spectacular, RCA Living Stereo title. All really good. I found this on the web for Open Spectacular, RCA Living Stereo title. Check it out. Technology. Okay. Probably edit that out. Okay, Bill Evans at the Montreux Jazz Festival. This is the 33 RPM version. Dr. John's Gumbo. Masterpieces by Duke Ellington. This is the 33 RPM version. Breaking Silence by Janice Ian. A lot of these I haven't had in a long time. Tony Bennett at Carnegie Hall. Miles Davis, Seven Steps to Heaven. They did a killer job with this. They did Someday My Prince Will Come as well. Sounds fantastic. Seven Steps to Heaven, 33 RPM. From my top 100 imprint analog jazz records you should own, Leonard Skinner, it's pronounced Leonard Skinner. Oscar Peterson trios uh, doing West Side Story. Another uh, Leonard, all the Leonard Skinner stuff is fantastic. I just think Pronounce is a better album, but yeah, give me back my bullets. Also at 45 RPM. One of my favorite restocks here is uh, Dusty Springfield, Dusty in Memphis. Unbelievably killer sounding record on my top 100 imprint analog records you should own list. Everybody that I've ever recommended it to has thanked me. It sounds killer. Another RCA Living Stereo title, Julian Bream. Lightning Hopkins, the blues of Lightning Hopkins. This is from the Prestige series as well. John Coltrane, Prestige 7105, self-titled-ish. All the Coltrane Prestige stuff is just absolutely fantastic, must-haves. With the Red Garland Trio. I think this might actually be his hardest album to find on Prestige, to find an original. Johnny Hodges from the Verve series. I, th I thought most of these Verve titles were out of print, but it seems like maybe they're redoing a few of them. Haven't had this in a while. From my top 100 imprint analog records you should own list, The Doors. 
This is also the winner of my shootout video. This is by far and away the best sounding version of that album. The Legendary Sun House. This is the 45 RPM version. They did it as a 33 as well. I should have both in stock. And Willie Nelson Stardust. And we've got another Verve title, The Soul of Ben Webster. All right, guys, that is it. Check us out online at theingroove.com. Until next time.